Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. We've got a really strange surprise update today. Mac OS Sequoia 15.3.1. We're going to start a full Sherlock Holmes investigation to find out what's behind this update on our Apple Silicon and our Intel supported devices. Plus, we're definitely not going to forget our unsupported Macs on Open Core Legacy Patcher as a sneak peek to make sure the update installs okay. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. With the surprise release of Sequoia 15.3.1, we also got security updates for macOS Sonoma 14.7.4, macOS Ventura 13.7.4, iOS and iPadOS 18.3.1, iPadOS for older devices 17.7.5, no AudioOS, for HomePods, no TVOS, WatchOS 11.3.1, and VisionOS 2.3. Point. To test the 15.3.1 update, we are using a MacBook Air M1 2020. We've also got our Intel T2 2018. We're going to test alongside the update. For the update, all you need to do is go into System Settings and then Software Update, and you'll see the update right here. You can click here to get more information about the update, or just click on Update Now. We'll click on Agree, and we'll type in our password for our user account. This machine is logged in with my test fake user Apple ID account, and it also is File Vault 2 encrypted, is as close as a normal installation as possible, along with a full suite of different applications to be able to test against. And we're downloading pretty quickly once it gets started here. And there goes the download. After the download is complete, we'll test to see how long it takes to install the update, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back up after installing the 15.3.1 update. What is the build version? 24D70. And there was no beta releases of this or any testing that was done on this before release. How long did it take to install the 15.3.1 update? Well, this is the fastest update out of all of the previous macOS Sequoia updates at eight minutes. Four to prepare and four to install. So that shows you how small this update is and that's why it installed so fast. On the Intel side though, we do not get the benefits of the faster updates. We still are updating the old standard way before Apple Silicon came out. On the 15.3.1 update, even though it was one of the smallest updates for Sequoia, it still took a full 17 minutes start for prepare to finish to install the update. Let's take a look at the 15.3.1 update sizes for Open Core Legacy Patcher unsupported Macs. You need the full update and that is 15.22 gigabytes and that's normal. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, your update is going to be 1.43 gigabytes from 15.3. If it's older, it's going to be larger. For your Intel from 15.3, it's going to be 640 megabytes, 15.2139. Now let's take a look at the firmware updates in the 15.3.1 update. For Apple Silicon, we did get a firmware update to 11.881, 81.4 from 81.2. So a small incremental update there. Same thing with the OS loader version was updated. Now on the Intel side for Bridge OS, it was not updated. It remains 13.051 like it was in Sequoia 15.3. And the same thing with the T2 firmware. It has remained the same since 15.3. What about Mac OS Safari? Safari was not updated and this is a huge change. This is the first time since the 1501 release that Safari has not been updated in a security update or a feature release bug fix. It remains 2.4.11.5, the same as the 15.3 update, which was updated to 18.3. But what about Sonoma and Ventura? Because they get individual Safari updates, they also did not get a Safari update in remain on 18.3. All right, now with that all out of the way, what's actually new in the macOS Sequoia 15.3.1 update? Oh, this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. Okay, well, let's take a look at the security release page. Oh, this update has no published CVE entries. Well, your guess is good as mine. I don't know what's in this update. I mean, I don't understand how Apple expects us to just go and install this update with no information about it. No fixes, no vulnerabilities listed, nothing. Sometimes what happens is Apple doesn't publish the CVE because it hasn't been published to the public yet. 
and they're waiting on something. And we don't know that, and we, don't know, we won't know that for a couple of days, or they might not at all. If they were holding back a CVE in here, it would be nice if it said more information to come on published CVE updates or something like that, letting us know that to expect something. But right now we've got nothing here. Now on the iOS side, there's a really big security update. Let's talk about that really quick. If we go to the 18.3.1 update here, we can see what this is about. Impact, a physical attack may disable USB restricted mode on a locked device. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. CVE 2025-24200. Does that affect Mac OS? It doesn't show it. We can't say that. So we are sitting here kind of driving blind on what is updated. What we can do is look at what we already have, which is how I talked about the firmware update. For Apple Silicon devices, we got a firmware update. It doesn't talk about that anywhere else. That's why I track this stuff. Could that have fixed something on the USB side? We don't know. My friend Howard Oakley at the Eclectic Light Company, if you haven't seen his site, be sure to check it out. And you can check him out on Twitter too. Um, he posts amazing Mac articles. I've always looked up to Howard. He has some of the most amazing deep dive articles out there, period. Give him a follow, please. But he will look over all the binaries and applications, and he did the same thing. Basically, he said, there's nothing on there. What's going on? But what he did notice was, is that there was a single minor build increment in the Messages app and no other significant changes in the system library. He did find something, and it was very small, but it was something. Again, it would be nice if Apple would have listed out to something, but then what are we expected to do? Keep coming back to the security update page to, to load it up? What are businesses and education and government entities supposed to do? Is this a big deal? If we look at this, it says important security updates. So Apple, I really hope that you can give more information in the future on this. I mean, what, what do we, what do you expect us to do in this situation? I mean, really, I hope we can get some better patch notes going forward. Since I'm a Mac OS platform engineer in the Fortune 500 company arena, I always look at the enterprise notes because there's a lot of important fixes in there. And I always check just in case there's not an incremental update in, in there that includes anything. But in this case, there is nothing for 15.3. So no enterprise changes in this release. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores for our late 2020 M1 MacBook Air. On 15.3, we scored a 23.84 on the single core and an 87.62 on multi. And then after installing the 15.3 one update, we got a 2394 on single and 8775 on the multi-core and those are right in line with each other what i do when i run the benchmark scores is i make sure i turn off screen sharing and make sure all of the spotlight indexing is complete the battery is charged to full and all applications are closed and you can take a look at my account to see all my previous runs of the benchmark now let's take a look at our Intel Mac Mini T2 2018. We got a single core 1568 and a multi of 6781 on 15.3. Once we install a 15.3.1, we got a 15.71 and a 66.98 on the multi-core. They're right in line with the previous update. The multi-core is a little bit slower on the Mini on the security update. Okay, now let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.2.0 and Mac OS Sequoia 15.3.1 update. Normally what I'll always do, test a couple machines right off the bat just to make sure that there's base compatibility. And then I will go into full testing mode on my entire fleet and put out a separate focus video against the latest update of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And that usually comes out within a day or two after all my testing is complete. But with 2.2.0 is still the mainline version that that is compatible with 15.3.1. And for our testing devices, we've got three so far that I'm using today. We've got our Mac Pro late 2013 metal compatible video cards, and it's running very well on 2.2.0. We also have our non-metal 17 inch late 2011 Fatbook Pro on 2.2.0, and it is also running very well. I did not get any login window crashes like I did in the last update, so that's looking really good. Our metal compatible early 2014 11-inch MacBook Air. After the update was applied, it stopped at a 30 to 40 percent boot bar in the black Apple logo booting screen. And no matter what I could do, it would continue to stop at that point. If that does happen to you, what you can do is shut it down, power it up, hold down the shift key, and we can do what we're doing here 
is boot into safe mode. And then if there is a problem with the booting or something else, the system can still sometimes boot without any graphics packages or anything like that. But that's the point. We didn't even get to the point where we got to the login window so I could apply those patches to get the graphics acceleration running. So let's log in here and take a look. This I haven't even been able to take a look. This is the first time I've been able to get this system to boot here with safe mode. So we'll see what we can find out after logging in here. Warning that we had to power down, click ignore. We're back to the screen here, so it should take a second. It's finishing the rest of the update. What we'll do is we'll let this last part, this is the final step of the update finish, and we'll see if we're able to boot again or not. Nope, it is not booting. We got a lit up keyboard. We are stuck at the progress bar at 40%. So we are gonna have to shut down, hold down shift again, and try to go into safe mode. Okay, we're back up, let's log in. See if we can get this guy fixed. Okay, there's our message that we had to restart. We'll click on ignore. Now, since we've launched this machine to be able to boot in safe mode, the automatic launch agent will not kick off to tell you that you need to install the patches. So we have to start that manually. So we'll open up the Open Core Legacy Patcher app. And before we do that, let's check the extensions folder here. Because if those don't clear out, sometimes that prevents boot. So we'll go library extensions. And we have the frame buffer in there. Let's delete those two because we should only have the high points in there. And then we will try again before we even try to apply the patches. So now let's restart. See if that was preventing the issue. Those extensions did not get cleared out on the restart to boot. When that happens, that can cause problems with booting. That's why one of the troubleshooting steps clear out the extensions folder. And that's what we just did. So that we were able to boot back into the system without safe mode. And now the Open Core Legacy Patcher launch daemon launch engine should kick off and tell us that we need to install the root patches. So we'll give it a second here. It is not kicking off on its own. Let's take a look. Yeah, see, this does not have any launch daemons or launch agents in here. But what we will do is we'll kick off the patcher here. They are written after we write the root patches. And we've got Intel Haswell, Modern Wireless, and PCIe FaceTime. And there's our Metal Lib package that we needed. We're connected to Ethernet here. We do not have our Wi-Fi connected. So we've talked about that before. So one thing to note, we did not have a kernel debug kit on this update, but we did have a metal lib support package for these machines. And sometimes that happens with kernel debug, even though we got one in 15.1.1, we did not get one today for 15.3.1. And there they are. The root patcher applied the launch daemon here and the launch agents. So next time, we will be ready with the auto patcher and you can see here by looking at this what happens it runs at load and runs the open core patcher and will auto patch to check every time we load so that's why these weren't kicked off because they are put into place by the root patches we'll click on reboot here and restart and you can see that the launch agents added notification bar popped up here and by the time we get back up we should be fully working on our early 2014 11 inch macbook air now see here's where it is this is the open core patcher log that runs when i showed you the launch agents the launch agents run as the user and the launch daemons run as a system or root so when we look at the launch daemons, this is the one that runs every time there's a Mac OS update. And you can see here in this log what it actually does. One of the main jobs it needs to do is clear out library extensions. And you can see on this 2016 MacBook, it needed to remove the Apple Intel graphics text. If that does not happen, that's where we run into the non-booting problem. And that's exactly what happened on this MacBook Air because the launch daemons were not there. This is the launch agent that does the auto package. We'll go back to the launch daemon here so you can see that if these aren't there, this does not run and this cannot clear out the extensions in the library extensions folder. And we can verify that by going into our user share folder to look at the log. And we can see that right in here, 2.2.0. And then look at that. That's what we deleted. 
the Apple HD 5000 graphics text. And if that doesn't happen, that's where we weren't booting. So now we know what happened to this system and why I wasn't re rebooting. And the reason why is because I was not getting the Metal Lib package set to run before the update was installing. So I reinstalled Open Core Legacy Patcher, just the installer package, and it did not put these in there. These are put in there when you run the root patches. So that's why this system was not running, and this is running great on 15.3.1 with Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.2.0, and we now know I created the issue. So that's why we still test, because we can still find out these issues can happen, and the update is running just fine. And that's it for the 15.3.1 update video. Let me know in the comments what you think about this update. Are you just as frustrated as I am that there's no patch notes, no security notes? What's going on here? Um, are you going to update? Are you not going to install it? I, you don't have to install it because I don't even know what the heck's in there. Again, I'm going to keep an eye on the update security page just to see if anything's published here. But we shouldn't have to just keep checking that page to see if anything's put there. We'll have to keep an eye on this, and I'm going to start working on the Open Core Legacy Patcher for Unsupported Max video to test all the other machines to see how it runs. The early tests look good. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next Open Core update video. Thanks.